so today let's record the charging and discharging curve of some supercapacitors using my DIY digital oscilloscope with an ATML and it's using a television as a monitor just a quick peek inside of it, the buttons, the LED, the microcontroller, some resistors, a potentiometer, capacitors and that's it really not much in it and I will use this to record the slow discharge and charge curve of the capacitors I will measure the voltage on the capacitor using a high impedance, high resistance resistive divider made of high resistance resistors and there is a potentiometer for calibration I can calibrate it I'm using a TL431 voltage reference 2.5 volts to calibrate it to 5 divisions now it's half a volt per division 5 divisions is 2.5 volts and it goes up to 3 volts which is convenient because these capacitors go up to 2.7 volts and you can see both of my DIY bench power supplies together one is to power the oscilloscope circuitry and the other one will be charging the capacitors and this oscilloscope is quite convenient because it can record quite slow processes because the time base can go all the way to 6 hours per division now it's 6 hours per division which is 48 hours for the entire screen and it can scroll and record up to 8 days and just for comparison the slowest time base of this Tektronix oscilloscope is 10 seconds per division and this one can actually go down to, let's see, 1000 seconds a division that's about 17 minutes per division so I guess it can fit about 4 hours onto the screen and this one, 10 seconds a division so this one with the 1000 second division time bias is usable to record the charging or discharging but still not for the self discharge where you definitely want to fit more than 4 hours Let's begin with this supercapacitor from eBay for about five dollars, 2.7 volts, 500 farads. I will pre-discharge it and then let's record the charging curve from zero at a constant current. I will be charging the 500 farad capacitor at 350 milliamps from zero volts to 2.6 volts, and according to my calculator, it should take about one hour. I swapped the power supply so the small one is powering the oscilloscope and the big one is going to be charging the capacitor it's connected to the terminals of the power supply and the measuring cables go here and it will be measured by this oscilloscope but also the one oscilloscope and the vertical in this television is occasionally unstable when I push these controls I guess there is some bad solder joint I will open it in some of my videos as well I'm setting this oscilloscope to 10 minutes per division starting up the other oscilloscope as well and turning the power supply on and it's charging the capacitor now and the auto off of my multimeter is always beeping and of course the other oscilloscope recording it is this one running at 500 seconds per division and it definitely seems to be recording something and this one as well and that's what this one recorded and this one it looks very similar it's initially charging a bit faster and then it slows down and now let's try to discharge it at a constant current using my DIY battery analyzer yet another homemade contraption involved in this test so here's the voltage of the capacitor let's discharge it at 0.35 amps the discharging current is going to be the same as the charging current down to well this is the minimum of this tester and let's start discharging it and it's discharging now I'm not resetting the oscilloscope I will do it in one continuous run and this one also keeps rolling the voltage is going down and this is what this one recorded so far here's the discharging curve and it seems to be roughly the same slope as here but going the other way in this one it doesn't fit onto the screen but you can scroll it using the buttons and it looks very similar as on the other oscilloscope and the voltage will get down to 0 0.8 volts and then it will stop discharging and then of course the voltage goes a little bit back up but just a tiny bit and the tester doesn't go all the way to zero because it's meant originally for batteries and now I guess the voltage will just settle at this 
and it will be just a horizontal line. So that's how the charging and discharging of the capacitor at a constant current looks on this one and on this one. And this one measures the energy it drew from the capacitor 0.371 watt hours or 371 milliwatt hours. And it also measured the charge in amperes 0.222 amperes or 222 milliampers. And of course the calculator has formulas for the energy in capacitors. This is the total energy in the capacitor and this is the delta energy. It's basically how much energy you discharge from the capacitor when you just partially discharge it, not all the way to zero volts. Or also how much energy you add to a capacitor which was already partially precharged. Our capacitor is 500 farads and it was discharging from 2.6 volts to 0.8 volts and so we discharged about one and a half kilojoules of energy. Let's switch it to watt hours or milliwatt hours and we took 425 milliwatt hours from the capacitor. The tester measured 371 milliwatt hours but it's in the right ballpark. The capacitance of the capacitor might be a bit off and the energy in it can also vary depending on how quickly you charge it, how quickly you discharge it and for how long you leave it sitting between the charge and the discharge. And here is almost a flat line. Of course now the capacitor would self-discharge but it's too slow to be visible on this time base. And we can see the same thing on this one. But after a discharge the voltage might have a tendency to go a bit up for a while. But at some point it would turn into a self-discharge and start going slowly down. And the charging is a bit curved, but the discharging seems to be a straight line. Charging the capacitor again to be able to record the discharge curve via a resistor and I noticed just putting this probe near the television makes this multimeter show the horizontal frequency. Interesting. And here's the discharge curve of the capacitor via a 3.6 ohm resistor. And that's more or less how every capacitor discharging via a resistor looks like. And there is a couple samples of the line but I guess it's a poor contact. The connections are in a breadboard or some interference. It always takes the same time for the voltage to half. It took about 20 minutes to go from 2 volts to 1 volt. And it also took 20 minutes to go from 1 volt to half a volt and again 20 minutes from half a volt to a quarter volt. The voltage halves every 20 minutes and it never actually reaches zero but it's approaching it closer and closer. And this is because unlike a constant current discharge the current draw of the resistor declines with the voltage. The less voltage the less current the resistor draws. Now the capacitor is charged so let's switch it to 6 hours of division and let's record the self-discharge. Recording the self-discharge, this is what it recorded so far and it's getting to about one and a half volts after 12 hours. After 18 hours about 1.2 volts. 36 hours about 0.9 volts. So that's 48 hours of self-discharge plus another two divisions, about 60 hours and it seems to plateau out at about 0.8 volts, just like in the previous video. Looks very similar to this from the previous test. Now let's try one of the 60 farad capacitors. It was sitting since the last test and now the voltage on it is 1.95 volts. Now let's discharge it via a 3.6 ohm resistor. And it's discharging. And that's how it discharged via the resistor. And now there's time to charge it. Now the capacitor is charged and it was kept fully charged just for a couple minutes and now let's disconnect it from the power supply and record the self-discharge. And now it's recording the self-discharge. After 48 hours, 2.3 volts. Now it's 48 hours plus. Another 5 divisions, 78 hours. And here's the voltage on the capacitor. And comparing it to the test from the previous video and it would be here. After 78 hours, basically the same voltage as during the second self-discharge test. 
And despite now the capacitor wasn't kept at 26 volts for too long. So it seems that these capacitors have to be formed. And the self-discharge is quite fast for the first time and then it gets much better. This was the first test just charging them and leaving them to self-discharge. The second test was charging them and keeping them at 26 volts and then leaving them to self-discharge. Which seems to have formed them. And during the third test I didn't keep them at 26 volts for too long but still the self-discharge is low now. Now let's try to charge the 10 farad capacitor at 100 milliamps. 50 seconds of division. And there was some weird spike when turning the power supply on. I'd expect the line to go from zero but this is probably some artifact. And the line is again a bit curved and it reaches 2.6 volts after about 340 seconds. And then it turns into a flat line and let's go to the self-discharge test. And of course putting the numbers into the calculator, charging the capacitor from 0 to 2.6 volts at 100 milliamps took 340 seconds and the capacitance comes out as 13 farads. After 24 hours it self-discharged to 1.8 volts. So this 10 farad capacitor is discharging at the same rate as the worst 60 farad capacitor during the first test before it formed. I randomly grabbed the 68 ohm resistor so let's discharge it via this one. And here's the resistive discharge curve. I started the oscilloscope when it was 1.5 volts. The 68 ohm resistor discharged the capacitor from 1.5 volts to 0.62 volts in 10 minutes and, believe it or not, the calculator calculated 9.98 something farads capacitance, super close to the 10 farad nominal. I'm charging the capacitor again at 100 milliamps and this time there was no spike at the beginning so I guess it was previously an artifact. Now the capacitor is charged again and let's keep it charged for 12 hours and then let's do the self-discharge again. The capacitor was kept at 2.6 volts for about 12 or 13 hours. And now let's observe the self-discharge. I'm setting the oscilloscope to 6 hours of division and disconnecting the capacitor from the power supply. And this is the 24 hour discharge curve for the second time. And now it self discharges way less. Let's just show the comparison. And after 24 hours the 10 farad capacitor got into this spot. And previously it got into this spot. So it seems to have formed quite a lot and it's also acting very similar to the 60 farad capacitors. On the other hand the 500 farad capacitor has a high self-discharge which does not improve at all with more cycles or after keeping it charged for 12 hours. Now let's measure the ESR of the 60 farad capacitors using this ESR meter. It shows about 19 milliohms but it might be skewered by the resistance of the leads. Let's try to short the capacitor using my probe. Zero it out and it's 19 milliohms. I've already previously zeroed it out and it seems to remember it even after it turned off. Let's try more pieces to see how consistent it is. This one is 20 milliohms and this one is 19 milliohms again. And I have to stress that the ESR can be only measured when the capacitor is completely discharged. 20 milliohms. It all seems to be the same ESR. And now some of the eBay 10 farad capacitors. This one 40 milliohms. This one 36. And the last one 36 again. I was previously measuring the ESR of this big capacitor and it was about 3 milliohms, but it's not easy to measure such low ESRs. So that's it and if you like my videos please consider supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button because it keeps this channel running. And a big thanks to all of you who already support me.